It has been a cold night since I left the station after doing so much paperwork. Afterwards, I wanted to get away, as my colleagues were going to this Irish bar in downtown Boston to meet up with the others. But I was proud of being in the U.S. Marshal Service for 11 years. For me, I drove around and then decided to leave the city. I decided to go to this beach. Even at night, it looked... Even at night, it looked beautiful. But unbeknownst to me, my gas tank was half empty and I needed to charge my phone. But unbeknownst to me, my gas tank was half empty and I needed to charge my phone. And to make matters worse, I had a flat tire. And to make matters worse, I had a flat tire. So I spotted the speech house that wasn't too far away. I slowly drove up to it. Hopefully I could speak to the homeowner or house sitter if I could charge my phone and call AAA. But there I spotted a woman sitting, or so I thought at first since it was a little difficult due to the nightlight. And when I got a better look, it was a doll. A human-sized doll wearing Victorian clothing. I was pretty freaked out by this, seeing how detailed it was even from a few feet away. Of course, no one was home as I saw no vehicle in the driveway. As I walked away, I heard the door open, and as I looked back, there was no one there now. And as I looked back, there was no one there. Now, as if I wasn't already freaked out by the doll sitting, having this door open by itself was unexpected. But being the off-duty agent that I am, I closed the door. As I did so, out of the corner of my eye, I saw someone moving. And when I looked out of the window from the outside, the doll was no longer sitting. My mind was racing as I saw this. I, a full-grown adult, walked out of there fast. As I walked towards my car, I heard footsteps behind me. I paused and looked back, but I didn't see anyone. Observing the area where I stood, I walked back to my car and heard footsteps again. I looked back and saw the silhouette of a woman. Hello there, ma'am, I called out. As she walked towards me, it was the doll, wearing its scarlet and red Edwardian ball gown. I was in disbelief. Like, how did this doll even get out of the house? I tried to grab my gun, but realized that it was in the car. Panic rising, I decided to take my chances and sprinted towards the car. The footsteps behind me grew louder and quicker, echoing eerily on the deserted beach. My heart pounded in my chest as I fumbled for my keys. And finally, I managed to unlock the car door and jumped inside, locking it immediately. Through the window, I saw the doll approaching, her lifeless eyes staring directly at me. A chill ran down my spine as she reached the car and pressed her porcelain face against the glass. I could feel her cold breath on the other side. My mind raced, trying to make sense of what was happening. Was I losing my sanity, or was this some twisted prank? I had no time to dwell on it as the doll's expression turned menacing and her hand reached for the door handle. In a state of panic, I realized my tire was flat. I tried to start the car, but it wouldn't budge. Desperation and fear surged through me as I looked around for help, but the beach was deserted and the darkness seemed to close in. As I sat there, heart pounding, the footsteps grew nearer. I turned to see the doll, now standing just outside the car, her eerie gaze fixated on me. I could barely believe what I was witnessing, a doll that had come to life. I frantically searched for my phone, hoping to call for help, but it was nowhere to be found. In my haste to leave the beach house, I must have left it behind. I was trapped alone with this malevolent doll. The doll's lifeless lips moved, and I heard a chilling whisper that seemed to come from all directions. You cannot escape, agent. Embrace your fate. Fear gripped my heart as I felt an unseen force constricting around me. I tried to open the car door, but it wouldn't budge. The doll continued her haunting chant, and the air grew thick with an otherworldly presence. In a last-ditch effort, I reached for my gun, hoping it would protect me from whatever dark force had taken hold of this doll. But as I grasped the weapon, I felt a strange sensation spreading throughout my body. My limbs grew heavy and my vision blurred. I realized with horror that I was losing control over my own body. The doll's power was consuming me, bending me to her will. With a final surge of strength, I fought against the invisible grip, trying to resist the doll's malevolence, but it was no use. My body moved on its own and I found myself stepping out of the car, drawn toward the doll like a moth to a flame. As I stood before her, the doll's eyes seemed to turn black. I was now under her control, a pawn in her sinister act. I had stumbled into something beyond comprehension, a force of darkness that defied all logic. The doll spoke again, her voice a haunting echo in my mind. You will be with me, Agent, for eternity. Like heck I am, I answered back. I knew I had to put an end to this nightmare. With my heart pounding in my chest, I aimed my gun at the doll's lifeless figure. In a swift motion, I pulled the trigger, shooting her square in the chest. 
To my horror, she didn't even flinch. Instead, the doll's eyes gazed at me and pushed me to the ground, sitting on top of me. Before I could react, her cold, plastic hands gripped me with surprising strength. I struggled against her, my mind racing for a way to stop her. My left hand was free. And then an idea struck me. In a desperate move, I reached for her, feeling for something, anything, that could disable her. My fingers brushed against a strange, soft object that was throbbing, and with a surge of determination, I pulled it out with all my might. To my surprise, it was this abnormal rubber heart adorned with mysterious runes, gushing out an odorless liquid from its rubber veins and arteries, or are they tubes? As I held her heart in my hand, which was bigger than a mango, the doll's movement ceased. Her once fierce grip loosened and her lifeless eyes stared back at me, now devoid of their malevolence. I realized that this rubber heart was the source of her power and the key to her malevolent existence. With a mix of fear and awe, I watched as the doll's body went limp, its life force severed from the unnatural heart. I had stopped her. The nightmare was over. As I stood there, still trembling with adrenaline, I knew I couldn't leave this cursed heart behind. I had to make sure it would never harm anyone again. With determination, I secured the heart in a sturdy wooden box that I found next to a bin, still beating, and locked it away safely. I didn't know what I would do with it just yet. But one thing was for certain. I couldn't let it fall into the wrong hands. As the sun rose, casting its golden rays over the beach, I felt a sense of relief wash over me. The nightmare that had haunted me was finally over, and I could return to my life as a U.S. Marshal. Hello everyone, I'm Giggles, and thank you so much for listening to my narration. A quick shout out to all my patrons, Melissa Perez, Geek Sanctuary, Lawrence Wallen, Andrea Sanderson London, Eric Sefuentes, Krzysztof Kozak Slezak, Jesse Hartley, and Icy Narrates. If you want to become a patron today, you can check out the link in my description below. And as always, thank you so much for your support. I'll see you in the next video.